Give me a Barry White voice. Appreciate it, sir. Hey, uh, it's good to see you this morning. Last Sunday of 2021, all for some reason, all morning long when I've been thinking about it, I still been calling it 2020. Uh, it just all feels the same. But anyway, we, we made it through. Uh, if you have your Bibles, uh, I'm going to ask you to turn to the book of Acts. This morning we will uh, kind of tie up where, not really, to, well, I'm not really going to re-preach per se what Luke finished in Acts chapter 2, uh, but next Sunday we will start back in the book of Acts. But this morning I just kind of want us to think about some stuff uh, heading into 22 uh, just looking at the book of Acts. But I do want to say this. First of all, Daniel's already going. I was making fun of him about his pedal board here. But, man, I'm so thankful for Daniel and the team of them uh, each Sunday uh, all year long coming and, and serving us and serving God. And so can we just – there's many of them. Let's just give all that team a hand. Uh, the guys in the back that, are, that serve, uh, that are here 7 o'clock on every Sunday morning here to, to, to get things ready, and so I'm thankful for all of them. I'll be praying for, for Paul and Sarah and Ryan and the rest of the youth. They leave out uh, tomorrow morning headed to uh, Tennessee uh, to a youth conference there, so we'll uh, lift them up. Uh, also, pray for Luke. Luke's here now, but he leaves this Friday uh, going to North Carolina to go to school. Uh, mo- most of us know, some of you may not, Luke uh, is in the doctoral program at Southeastern. And so uh, start, he leaves out Friday, and he'll be back the 15th. He's going there to have three w- many winter terms. Uh, and so obviously be praying for him as he's, he's away for, from us, away from Lauren there uh, for, for a couple weeks there. So let's lift him up. Uh, John Ryan and Jenny made it back from California. Uh, we prayed for them uh, right before they left, and so they've been serving there uh, with an the internship there, uh, so I'm glad to have them back. Anyway, as I began to pray through what to kind of share this morning, I just began thinking about 2021. Like I said, I called it 2020 all year, 2020 and 2021 feel like uh, just one long lifetime year, uh, but we made it, like I said, we, we were here. We're still kicking. We're still, we're still here. And so I began thinking about kind of what a year this past year looked like. Uh, and, you know, we, we began this year, or yeah, began 21 with uh, really beginning to lay some, some new groundwork for us as a church, us foundational stuff with the gospel-driven church series where we began to really lay the foundation of what, uh, what our year looked like and what this coming, really the next two, three years looks like as far as where we're headed as a church, shoring some things up and, uh, and things like that. So I'm excited uh, uh, to really to continue to see some things uh, uh, happen. And we, we went through the, the taught through a series on the, the Holy Spirit. We walked through the book of Ruth this summer. Uh, uh, we, uh, we started Acts 12 weeks ago uh, and made it through two chapters. Uh, and so I will say this, that in, in 22, the things began to speed up a little bit because the story, uh, you know, it's a narrative, and so it just kind of begins to take off. And so we're still going to take our time. But uh, anyway, so I thought about that. Um, you know, in, in 21, the Lord sent Luke and Lauren to us, and we're excited about them being here. We're blessed by them here, and I know I am, and I know you are as well. Uh, I'm thankful for for all of that. Hey, we even got to begin to eat together again as a church in 21, right? Uh, I don't know if y'all noticed that like for the past four months, I feel like almost every month we try to have something that we could eat together. Uh, and so that was exciting. Uh, you know, we just began to fellowship together. And I'm thankful for, and I just as your pastor, I'm thankful for another year to be able to, to serve y'all and hang out with y'all. And uh, so I appreciate y'all allowing me uh, to be your pastor. When we began to think about uh, 2022 just began to, uh, you know, I'm not the guy that comes up with creative words for you to think about for a year. That way, when you're having a bad day, think about this word kind of a deal. And, uh, and I'm not necessarily the most creative person in the world. I kind of want to give you some insight of what 22 is going to begin to look like. Uh, we'll, and next Sunday, we'll start back in Acts 3, uh, and we will hang out in Acts at least through May. Uh, we'll get to the chapter 8 area, somewhere around in there. Uh, we'll take... Uh, We'll take some time off for Easter, but also what I, I want to go ahead and introduce, many of you know, uh, we will take uh, really almost the whole month of February off of, of Acts, and what we're going to do in 22, this is kind of like phase two of where we're headed as a church, and what I'm calling it right now today is kind of like a membership renewal. 
uh, if you will, to where we will, through, through February and actually the first week of March, uh, we're going to teach what will become the new starting point. And we're all going to walk through it together. Uh, and so uh, and, you know, that does say, Justin, no, that doesn't make sense. It'll make sense to you as we get there. Uh, and so, well, because where we're at as a church, we need to know who, who's committed to this people, who, who, who are these people as in covenant members and things like that. And so anyway, we're going to do that uh, in, in February. Uh, you know, we begin to look at Acts chapter 2, 42, uh, and look at uh, what this early church looked like, what we're going to look about this morning, what they devoted themselves to. Uh, I remember three or four years ago, or three years ago, when I really, I really couldn't vocalize where I felt the Lord was, was calling us and telling, directing us is what one through 47, uh, and then we will We'll dive in a little bit. Verse 41 says, so this is after Peter preached the sermon following Pentecost and the Holy Spirit coming, uh, and, and, and the people who heard said, you know, what shall we do? And he tells them to repent and be baptized. Verse 41, it says, so those who received his word were baptized. And there were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they, so the same they, that received his word, that were baptized, the same 3,000, it says, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship and the breaking of bread and their prayers, and all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together. In a nutshell, the book of Acts is by these arrows that, that Jesus went up, the Spirit came down, and the church goes out. So that's kind of Acts in a nutshell. So this morning, what I want to do is I want to look at verse 42 and ask ourselves a few questions. So 42 says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of bread, and the prayers. They devoted themselves. This morning, when I woke up, I began to think about this word, they devoted. They devoted themselves. And I'm not a smart guy, so I had to look up the actual definition. You know, I know and the actual definition of devoted is giving oneself to something or someone. It gives the picture of self-sacrifice. So when they devoted themselves to these things, literally, they were giving themselves away to these things. They were sacrificially giving of themselves to these four things. It wasn't something that they just lackadaisical did. It wasn't something that just had a small part of their life. No, they gave themselves over to this. They, they completely self-sacrificed uh, themselves to the word and these things. So I want you to keep this in mind when we think about these verse, this verse, and I'll ask us four questions. The first thing, they devoted themselves to, number one, the word. It says that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. And may, I don't know if you've ever thought about this. Maybe when we think about the te you know, teaching of the Bible, in our mind, we automatically go to like a preacher standing on stage or a Sunday school class, a teacher who has, you know, the full Bible uh, or has a Sunday school lesson that somebody else wrote for them so they could just read it out, that kind of a deal. And, you know, that. And, and so when we think about Bible teaching, that's usually what we think about. Do you know what the apostles' teaching was? They didn't have this full scripture. What they had is they had the Old Testament, and, and even better than that, they had just hung out with Jesus who said, I am, the, I am the realization of this Old Testament, and they had the teachings of Jesus. And they understood, they, they knew the gospel, what the gospel had done in their life. And so these people, they devoted themselves to this. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They devoted themselves to the teachings of Jesus. They had all they needed. You realize they didn't have on their phone apps that had 2,000 different references that they could go to understand the scripture. What did they have? They had the very words of Jesus in the Old Testament, but something happened at Pentecost is that the Holy Spirit came to reside within them. And when that Holy Spirit came to reside with them, these young believers, listen to me, they had everything they needed to understand Scripture and understand the Word of God because the Holy Spirit would illuminate it. And so they, they sacrificially gave themselves, they devoted themselves to understand the Word of God, to understand Scripture, to actually know the truth and believe the truth. They devoted themselves to it. These same 12 apostles or 11 that Jesus met with and said, I am these things. The, the one who had the very teachings of Jesus, right? 
They, it, it could have been good enough for them to understand I, that, that Jesus said, All right, it's Isaiah 53, that was me. This passage, it was me. No, what happened is there was this hunger with them to understand the scriptures even more, and they devoted themselves to that. Child of God, I want you to know this morning that the spirit in you is enough to understand these scriptures. That you have the same Holy Spirit within you this very morning as Peter did on the day of Pentecost. And listen to me, maybe young child of God. Whoever your spiritual hero is, when you think about like spiritual giants, we all have them in our life, right? Like that person, that Sunday school teacher that we had, or this person that was in our, our life that made a big impact. Listen to me, child of God. You have just as much Holy Spirit in you as they do. Will you devote yourself to the Word of God, to the, to the preaching and the reading of the Word of God in 2022? Will you give your, listen to me, it's sacrificial. Well, there's a sacrificial giving of oneself to understand the truths of God's word. Will you do that in 2022? I can guarantee you, I promise you that each Sunday morning in 2022, we will stand up and we will teach the word of God. I can't guarantee you a lot of things, but I can guarantee you that each Sunday morning, somebody will stand up here and we will teach the word of God. Will you commit to being under the teaching of God's word? But not only that, will you commit to being in the reading of God's word on your own? Because with a Bible in your hand and the Holy Spirit within, listen to me, you, you have all you need to know God and to love God. Believe that this morning. I believe there's some in here this morning that, you know, Justin, I'm just not... I'm just not smart enough to understand. No, but the Holy Spirit within you is the one who inspired men to write it. He can make it make sense to you. You devote to spending time in God's word. Listen to me, not the word of some dead man, but the word of God. Will you devote yourself to reading scriptures? Listen, I'm all about commentaries and, and, and reading other people, but they're not... <laughs> They're not God. Will we devote ourselves to reading God's word? And listen to me, the word of God, and I don't want to get into five solas, but it, it's sufficient within itself. It, it teaches itself. When you're reading, you get to a point you don't understand, keep reading. There's a good chance that the Bible's going to teach you what you couldn't understand about it somewhere else. It teaches itself. Keep reading. There's words you can't pronounce. Keep moving forward. I've been preaching for 20 years now almost, and I still can't say half the words that are in here, especially names. That's why I'm glad Luke's here, because I can ask him how to say things and still butcher them when I get up here, because I get stage fright. Will you commit? Will you devote? Will you sacrificially give yourself to understanding the word of God? There's a lady book. Will you, will you commit, will you pray for God to grow your heart and your love for the word of God? That he will give you a desire to move. Listen to me, and y'all have heard me teach this a lot. There's a difference between a childlike faith and a childish faith. We're called to have a childlike faith. We're called to, if, the, if scripture says, repent and believe that Jesus is Messiah, then that's childlike. I will do what Scripture tells me to do. We never move away from that childlike faith. There's a difference between childlike and childish. Childish faith is one that, that never grows in knowledge of God, that never grows in the depths of who God is and his character and understanding of his word. And listen to me, the more, the more mature our thinking of God becomes, the more childlike our faith will become. The greater we understand God, the greater we understand the truths of God, the more dependent I understand that I am of him and on him. The more that I study the word of God, the more that I come to grips going, I am, I am man and I am small and I am feeble and I need him for everything. Don't be scared. Don't be scared of, of diving into God's word because, because what will happen is you'll begin to see your love for God growing even more. 
you'll begin to see your disdain for your sin even more. So the question is, will you devote yourself to the preaching and the reading of God's word in 2022? Number two, they devoted themselves to each other. This is to the fellowship. And here's what's always been striking to me. We read this and we think about like this church, right? We begin to think about a church. We all, we all know each other pretty much, that kind of a deal. It wasn't so for these people. Just the day before, they were just, they were in Jerusalem. Actually, Luke tells us in Acts 2, 5, from, there were men from every nation under heaven. They were, they were all there. They were pilgrims into this place because they had come to, to celebrate Pentecost, right? To, to, to be there because God had called them to be there. Uh, so they, they all were there pretty much, I would say, majority of them, I, I guess I can use the word majority, probably didn't really know each other. Or maybe didn't even like each other before this day. So Justin, they were all Jews. That'd be like saying all Americans like each other. It's not the case, right? We, we, we understand that. They came to, to Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost. Like I said, from every nation under heaven. But what happened? The Holy Spirit changed something. The Holy Spirit reconciled these people who were other than just being Jews, they were from different places. And in a moment, something happened. In a moment, something changed. In a moment, they went from coming to Jerusalem to celebrate a Jewish uh, festival to now selling things that they, that they had to take care of these people who were once strangers the day before. Right, something happened. What was happening is the Holy Spirit reconciled them under the blood of Christ and in the blood of Christ that God began to create one new man and one new race. He took people who were otherwise had nothing in common and made them one in a moment. They devoted themselves to one. And I know that majority of, majority of these people were going to go back home because they weren't from Jerusalem, so they didn't just stay there forever, that they eventually, some of them may have did right when they were baptized and went. Some could have stayed for a little. We don't know how long they all stayed there, but what we understand is that when they were, when they were saved and they were baptized, that they began to love on one another. They began to commit themselves to one another. Listen to me. I'm thankful for the, the gift of the local church. I'm thankful that for the past five years, really plus five plus years that I've been able to call Cross Point my home. I, I never, when I first came, never would I imagine that I would be the guy that's standing up here. You know the story, I literally came to Cross Point to just be a part of Cross Point. I would probably be here even if I wasn't the pastor. Because I love this place and I'm thankful for the local church that is Cross Point. Well, my question to you is this, is will you devote yourself to God's people in 2022? Because what you and I, like, like look to your right, look to your left, and I'm not going to make you do the, like, the weird thing that, you know, cool pastors do, like tell your person next to you that he looks good today. I'm not going to do that stuff. But the people that are sitting in this room that are, that, are, that, are, that are part of God's church who are born again, do you understand that this is an eternal fellowship? Like all of most of our relationships that we invest in, most of our friendships that we invest in, right, that are outside of the church that definitely, but when we begin to think about the bride of Christ, that this fellowship that we have with one another is a fellowship that will still be in eternity. We're investing into eternal fellowships here. Matter of fact, John says it like this in 1 John. One three, it says that we have seen and heard and proclaimed to you also that you too may have fellowship with us. Indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ, that our fellowship is with God and his fellowship with one another is the relationship that we have or fellowship they have with God. The Lord unites us and brings us together with a bond deeper than anything else. And the bride and the church of Christ that all have a seat at the table. We're all family us who have been born again. Will you devote yourself to God's people in 2022? Will you devote yourself to the gathering of God's people? We're not going to start keeping like a, attendance and things like we're not going, <laughs> we're not going, all right, some of us here today wasn't here this week. Will you devote yourself to, to the gathering of God's people? 
Will you devote yourself in your everyday life to the God's people through prayer, through giving, through serving? 2022, will you, will you give yourself sacrificially to gather with God's people? Hey, I want to go ahead and tell you so you can book it. Next year, we will meet every Sunday. Go ahead and put it on your calendar. All right? Next Sunday, we will, it doesn't matter what happens, there will be a sermon that is preached for 52 weeks next year. There will be some type of gathering for 52 weeks next year. Mark it on your calendar, okay? Now, will you devote your time to gathering with God's people in 2022? Not put it as if I don't have anything else going on. No, will you say today that I will make an effort to, like my priority is to gather with God's people next year. To Justin, it's supposed to be inspiring. It's the end of the year. No, will we, will we, will we devote to gathering with God's people? Will we devote to praying for God's people? To supporting God's Luke said two weeks ago or three weeks ago that our treatment of God's people shows our value of Christ. Actually, I think I said, I think you said our treatment of, of Christ people shows our value of Christ. Listen to me, I know it ain't easy. I know it ain't easy to stay devoted to one another. Right? Well, as we talked about in the Gospel Driven series, every day we don't wake up in gospel mode. Right? Sometimes it's hard to love people who have been getting on our nerves. Sometimes it's hard to, to be nice all the time, right? That's why Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15 that we need to be reminded of the gospel. Why would he remind us of something of the gospel that should imply to us that sometimes we operate in a forgetful spiritual amnesia that we forget about the very gospel of Christ and have our call to one another, and we just need to be reminded, hey, the gospel. I know it's tough. I know our schedules get busy. But we will we devote ourselves to God's people in 2022. Number three, they devote themselves to meals and communion. Why is that a big deal? Let's just go with just meals eating together. Definitely biblically, sitting around the table with someone was a sign of acceptance to the person who you were sitting at that table with. That's why the Pharisees could not stand Jesus eating with tax collectors and sinners. Because he sat there and he's saying, I'm, I'm, I receive you as you are. There's a humbling thing whenever we sit around the table with someone. Uh, you know, I didn't, in my family growing up, we didn't really sit at the table. We, we ate wherever, or we ate at McDonald's drive through or whatever like that. But when Ash and I started dating, one of the greatest things that I, I enjoyed about their family was every night they sat around the table. And they would talk, hey, what was your favorite thing today? I was like, we got to have that in our family. And we do that in our family because there's something about sitting around the table with someone, right? And so what we see is here, these people, they just, they just like to be around one another. They like to eat together. That's why we've been eating so much as a church lately. We've just given opportunities for us to, to fellowship, for us to sit around a table with one another, just to talk about things. They, they, dev they devoted themselves to that, but they also devoted themselves to communion. What a sacred meal to partake of, and I've already said it, but next year, once a month, we'll be sitting uh, around the Lord's table taking communion as a, as a church. So the third question is, will you devote yourself to intentionally sharing meals with your family, church family, 2022? And I say sharing meals because that's two. Luke challenged us a few weeks ago. Hey, he challenged us to, 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 to invite somebody that, that we have, maybe don't know and invite them out to lunch or invite them over for dinner. Will you intentionally get to call, out, call one of your church members this year and, and have dinner with somebody? And will you devote yourselves to be here on those communion days for we as a church could take communion together? You know the dates. Will you devote yourself to that? Number four, and I'm done with this one. The fourth thing they devoted themselves was prayer. Because ultimately they knew that they, they could, the task was too big. There was nothing. They didn't have it within themselves. 
for what God was calling them to do. They knew that they were dependent upon God. They knew that the task was too big. But here's something else, and as the band comes out, this is something else that I realized. Not only, when we think about prayer, I really think about this. We think about prayer, we think it's probably them asking God for help. But this is the apostles. Like, this is the disciples who walk with Jesus. You know what they learned about prayer? Is that how, that's how Jesus communed with his father. Jesus wasn't always just asking the father to do something. It wasn't just asking God to, to come and to save him or, or do something. No, he went away to, to spend time with his father in prayer. We see that through the gospels. And what the apostles did here is they devoted themselves to spending time not just talking to God, but hearing from God. Not just, not just asking God for help, not just asking God to fix their problem, not just for asking God to help with this task, but literally communing with God. To set, to, to, to set time aside that they just sit there and just are in the presence of their Father. So the last question is who will you devote yourself to pray for in 2022? In 2022, who is it that God has placed in your life that you say, you know what? God's calling me. This goes back to the who's your one that we did two years ago. Going into 2022, who is it in your life that God is calling you to pray for? So you devote yourself to the preaching and the reading of God's word. Will you devote yourself to these things? Will you devote yourself to the, to, to, to the, to the fellowship, to one another, to the breaking of bread? Will you, will you be intentional about asking each other, hey, let's go out for dinner. Let's get to know one another. Me and I joke about this often, and maybe I shouldn't, because it makes me sound like a jerk, but I'm going to say it anyway. Is that there's no area, other area in our life that we need somebody to help us get to know people. Right? Let's take, for instance, like if your kid gets put on a sports team. You're going to get to know those parents. Why? Just because your kid's on a sports team. You're not going to, you're not, you don't need a bridge necessarily to begin to develop those relationships. It just happens because you're going to be at the same place all the time and you want to get to know, listen to me. But for some reason when we come to church, it's like, no, I need somebody to be able to help me to go talk to somebody about getting to know somebody. We have this whole, we have this whole new pastor system in churches that are called assimilation pastors that literally assemble bridges to, and I understand that to help people connect to places. But it's, it's to help people get to know one another. Well, how about we just go, hey, man, let's get to know one another. Hey, could we be so old school, just walk up and say, hey, can we do lunch tomorrow? Everybody, you catching my drift? And will we devote to get to know one another? In 22, we devote to praying for someone. Let's pray. Father, we love you. God, we thank you for your love for us. God, we thank you for your word. God, we look forward to getting back here next Sunday and jumping back into Acts and starting Acts chapter 3 and seeing how the, whole, the, the Spirit began to use the church to do miracles, to see people come to know Jesus. God, we look forward to seeing how you preserved them, how you even took their, their trials and used it for their good and for your glory. God, we look forward to that. God, I pray that each, within, each, each one of us in here this place this morning, God, that your spirit would cause an excitement for, for, to be here next Sunday already. God, I thank you for this church. I thank you for this family. God, I pray that you refine us. God, that we will devote ourselves personally and corporately to your word. 
that you will allow us to understand what you're doing in making us one. God, I thank you that we as a church can just love you together, serve you together, and point each other to you. So God, we pray that I pray that we we become like the early church, that we will literally give ourselves sacrificially to these things. God, what we see at the end of Acts 2 is that as the church was being the church, God, you added to the church. And all of us desire for you to add to this church. But God, it's not going to be done by being the most clever people in the world with the greatest catchphrases, with the greatest light show and greatest uh, internet church. God, it is going to be the church being the church. So God, may we be the church and trust you to bring people into the kingdom. We love you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.